All right, 10-5, the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, Pythagorean Theorem is going to have some, some radicals in it, some square roots, so that's why it's part of this, this topic. Um, it also only deals when you have, or it only works when you have a right triangle. So notice on the board I've got a, I've got a triangle with a box down the corner that signifies that those are perpendicular and that that's a right angle. And so we have three different sides in this triangle. We have side A, side B, and side C. A and B are called legs. Okay, they are the legs of the right triangle. And C is called the hypotenuse. And as it looks, if you're staring at the triangle, the hypotenuse is the longest side. Okay, the hypotenuse is the longest side. So the actual Pythagorean theorem is this. C squared, which is the longest side squared, equals A squared plus B squared. So we square the legs, add them together, and that will equal the, hy the hypotenuse squared, excuse me. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, so here's an example. Let me get the little right triangle. Everything you're dealing with today will be a right triangle, and you'll see those little boxes down in the corner. So I've got two sides. I want to find the missing side. So remember that the theorem is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay, so we don't know what c is, so that's just going to be c squared. Now, it doesn't matter which leg you put in first. You can have a equals 24, or you can have a equals 10. It doesn't make a difference. I'm just going to go in order from smallest to biggest. So I'm going to take the smallest side and square it. And then I'm going to take the largest side and square it. OK. And so then I'm going to find out those actual values. So I have c squared equals 10 squared is 100 and 24 squared is 576 you can use a calculator on this section and so now I have c squared equals 676 now to get rid of the c squared from the last section I'm going to take the square root of both sides and after I've taken the square root of 676 that gives me an answer of 26. So my missing side is 26. Now the only variations is, or are, the only variations are they may have them in different places. Okay, so let's take a look at another one. Okay, let's take a look at this example. This time it gave us the hypotenuse and also gave us one of the legs. So I'm going to take my theorem again c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And I didn't mention before, I should have. Um, it's my, my fault. Um, it's obvious that 15 looks like it's the bigger side. But to prove it's the bigger side, what you do is wherever your right angle is, if you draw the line diagonally, that side is always the hypotenuse. So it's the longest side. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our 15 and sub it in for our C, because that's our hypotenuse. So that's 15 squared. And then in this case, they already labeled it uh, the missing side with B. So I'm going to let 7 equal the A. So that's going to be 7 squared. And then we don't know what B is, so that's just B squared. Again, don't confuse that with the 6. That's the letter B. So I'm going to go ahead and square these. That's going to give me 225 equals 49 plus b squared. OK, and then I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. 
because I want to get the B by itself. And so that's going to give me 176. That cancels. Equals B squared. Let me scroll down just a little bit here. There we go. Square to both sides. Now, you will find this time that when you take the square root of 176, you're not going to get an exact answer. So they're going to ask you probably to round to the nearest tenth, excuse me, to the nearest hundredth. So this one comes out to be approximately, there's my approximately signs, 13.266. Okay, I'm going to take it out three places because I want to round it to the hundredths. All right, that's the one I'm rounding. That's the one that tells me what to do. So that's going to give me an answer of approximately 13.27. Okay, so some of them will come out exact, some of them will not. All right. Now, finally, they're going to give you a list of three numbers. And they're going to ask you, for example, let's say, um, let's say 9... 12 and 16. Their question will be, um, could these three sides form a right triangle? And so we can already identify the hypotenuse because 16 is the longest side. And then obviously the legs are going to be A and B. All right, so we're going to have, I'm going to go ahead and put my theorem over here like I do each time. And we're just going to substitute it in and see if it comes out to be true. So that's going to be 16 squared equals 9 squared plus 12 squared. 16 squared, as I look on my chart, is 256. 9 squared is 81. And 12 squared is 144. And so, when I add 81 and 144, that gives me 200, oops, 225, which obviously in this case, 256 does not equal 225. So these sides would not form a right triangle. We could make a regular triangle with them, but we cannot make a right triangle with them. Okay, so take the three sides, identify your A, B, and C, substitute it into the formula, and see if it comes out to be equal. That's all for today, about eight minutes, so we'll see you guys in the morning.